Okay, this is one of the questions that we're all faced with in this course in basic stats. We're given a continuous random variable, we're given the PDF of it, the probability density function, we're asked to derive the cumulative distribution function. So there's two functions going on here, the PDF denoted by small f, which is a function of x. Notice that it's split up into two parts here. For values that x is bigger than 1, it takes this value, so it depends on k, uh, x k is given as 4, uh, otherwise it's 0. And then we're given the CDF denoted by capital F. Right, so we're going to work through this quite slowly with notes. Let's sketch this thing first. So it comes in two pieces. When x is less than or equal to 1, this otherwise means when it's not bigger than 1, i.e. when it's less than or equal to 1, the function value is 0. So that denotes this one here including point 1, so I put a circle there on 1. When x is bigger than 1, the function is described by this. And so it looks like this. Tapering off asymptotes here. And um, I put an open circle to denote that the function value of x is 1 is 0, not 4. Right then. Make a point that x is a continuous random variable and that the PDF takes bigger than zero value when x is bigger than one. We want the CDF, so let's look at that. Definitions first. CDF is by definition the probability that x is less than or equal to a particular value, which we denote by small x. Okay, if the big x and little x trouble you, just change the small x, because the small x just denotes a particular value uh, into some other symbol like little a or something like that. What does this mean in terms of our graph here? It means that for given small x, we want the area, we want the area to the left of it. So if we pick this point here, you can see that this is the area plus that, but here there's no area on the graph here to the line um, PDF of 0, so there's no area under there because we're not looking at negative area down here. So there's no area under here, there's an area from here to here. And that's what we need to compute. Now carefully guys, typical error is that you get the wrong definition so you calculate the area above the particular point. No, that's not it. Right, then it's calculus time. So this here is by definition the area under the curve up to the point x. So that's what this limit is saying. Very careful to get the limits right. Um, put minus of it here because it's basically everything to the left of the point x. Also calculus notation. Um, why put t here instead of x is that we have to distinguish between the variable changing value and the point at which you compute the value, uh, the function. But so. We want to compute the function at a particular point x and the variable we're going to call it something else because x can't be both the variable and the point that you which can compute the value of the function. So I just call this variable something which is not x, so I've chosen t but you can call it anything you like. This t is called the dummy variable. Now because this random variable x is continuous, I am looking uh, calculating the area in the graph, I am integrating. If x, uh, if x were random variable or continuous, I would be summing. Okay, then I would replace this definition by sum. So let's do it for this uh, problem. I'm going to do it and talk about a place where it can go wrong. By substituting for this, for this problem, I have this. Okay. And the limits, we've got to be careful. It's 1 to a point x, not minus infinity. Why? Because up to the point x, the air, up to point 1, the area is 0 is 0. So I'm starting at 1. Although if you wanted to make it quite clear guys, you can write the following. Right, I've done this in grey here. So this bit here, this is saying that the area of the graph from up to point 1, okay, which is 0, because we can see it's over there, so we could just say that is, zero, that is 0 without any calculation. And this is the bit we're computing, and that's the bit I've written down here. Alright, so some more kind of um, mathematical stats books might write this bit down as well. You write that as zero, but I've written directly, you know, for, for applied point of view, just solving this thing. We just need to write this bit here. The 
area which is not zero. Now, this thing will always go to X, all right? So if you don't know what the heck you're doing, just write X there, okay? Down here, you're looking for a limit. Uh, I mean, if the question has a lower limit, write that number there. Here, that's the lower limit. This thing's from X is born. And you can see from the picture, that's why I've drawn, drawn the plot for you. Plots can help. I emphasize again, we'd make a distinguish between the dummy variable and the point at which you compute the value, uh, the point at which you compute the function. So I've got, you do not write x here and x there, here as well, okay? That's confusing the variable with the kind of value which computes in the function. Okay, although I've written this down, I'm still gonna, I still have to take my time because easy to make slips, guys. Right, now computing this thing, the integral. Now what can go wrong here? Well, if you haven't got, done much of the practice of, uh, of these things, you might, and I see this, uh, do people do differentiation. So you take the five minus five down minus one here, so it's minus the power of minus six. Now that's differentiating. Now we want to integrate. We want to integrate the thing. Just to remind you how this works. For this case, t to the a, if I'm going to integrate that, you raise that power to one, divide it by that power, okay? Plus, because I've not got limits here, plus constant of integration, let's forget that. If you're unsure about whether you've memorized the rule correctly, then undo it. So if I differentiate this thing, I should get back to t to the power of a. So let's take differentiate this thing, because usually we're, we're used to differentiating, so we memorize the rules easier. Take a plus 1 down, it's going to cancel out. Take 1 power off, it's then a, a. Yeah, then we're fine. Now, just one thing I like to do is here is um, take out the common factor. So I've got minus 1 quarter. I take that out. You don't have to if you don't like. I uh, still get the same result regardless. And so the force cancel, I've got minus there. Then I compute this thing substituting t for x, and then minus and then substituting t for 1. So that's how I get that. Now, careful here, the most common problems that you see with homework is minus through the brackets. Minus, minus is a plus, so I've got minus this guy. Minus, minus 1 is a plus 1. Now, how on earth do we know whether this is right or wrong? I'm going to show you how you can check your own answer. Helpful if it's an exam. Note, first of all, the uh, obvious things that this uh, CDF is a function of x, so our expression must involve x and numbers. If there's no x in there, there's something is wrong. Okay. I can collect my answer here in blue ink. Right, so it's in two pieces, that and this. Right, that, this bit I've just worked out. This I don't have to because I can see from the graph that the area is zero. Now, look at carefully about how I've done this. Well, do I need to say carefully? Not really. Um, unless you're doing a rigorous course in mathematical statistics. Right, because the random variable x is continuous, it doesn't matter if you put this less than or equal to here and greater than, strictly greater than here, okay? Although the way I've written it here is the rigorous way. Why it doesn't matter, uh, the rigorous way, so let me just point that out. So it should be like, le x is less than an upper limit and x is bigger than or equal to a lower limit is the rigorous way. And there's an explanation for that using analysis. But Now, we, we don't actually, it doesn't actually matter actually for the continuous case. Why? Because when x is continuous, finding the probability that x is less than or equal to a value a is the same as finding the probability that x is strictly less than a. Right? Likewise, it's probability x is uh, greater than or, or at least a is the same as probability that x is strictly bigger than a. Okay, so if you imagine here, if you plug in 1 here, that's 1 minus 1 over 1 is 0, which is the same as up here, if you stuck equal here. Now the question, as far as, so as, far as the question is done, we, we, we're finished, right? That's it. But just because I said I'm taking this nice and slow, I'm going to push on, just try to kind of now dig a bit deeper in terms of understanding. Right, put the PDF and CDF side by side. First of all, what do you know? The x-axis are the same, yeah? What do you know about the vertical axis? Well, this goes up to 1, from 0 to 1. This goes from 0, and it goes on and on. It goes past 4, OK? The point to make here is that the CDF is a probability. Remember how we defined it. So, and we know a probability takes value between 0 to 1. On the other hand, a probability density function, guys, is not the same as a probability mass function. It is not probability, and that's why we have values that does not, do, do, not have to be, do not have to be between 0 to 1. Uh, th by definition of PDF, it has to be bigger than or equal to zero, so it can't take negative values, but there's nothing to say that it can't take values bigger than one as it does here.
okay next let's compare the two graphs now let's just show you um, the relation between the two remember the CDF is looking at the area to the left of the graph at a particular point okay so let's look at this at point one because everything that's zero area underneath there move a little bit there now what's the area under that graph it's such and such amount right move a little bit more now what's the area it's such and such amount but has the area that you've add on the increment um, increased yes but by less than before yeah and if you keep moving you're adding each time smaller and smaller amounts of area I hope you can see that and what the CDF is doing it's recording it so from one if you move a little bit away from one first of all the area is a lot okay so that chunk there say I'm over here and read it off the graph is that area whatever this number is then you move a little bit on the PDF a bit more from that point and you're adding a little bit more area okay actually adding a bit more, quite a lot of area until you reach a certain point where it's flattening your graph is flattening out say around 2 if you move a bit from 2 can you see that you're adding a lot less area than before you know this little bit here whereas before you know you're adding up a great big amount so that's why this graph is flattening off because as you're going moving away from one you're adding less and less area so the CDF is recording you know the area of the area under the graph as you're moving along the X direction uh, X axis now some properties of this uh, P CDF so first thing I've noted doesn't have to be in this order but I've noted it CDF is a non decreasing in X what does that mean? It means as x gets bigger and bigger, as I'm traveling basically from left to right along this x line, the function does not fall. It can stay the same like I'm doing here, notice, and then when I hit the point A, it's increasing. Now notice it's increased quite a lot at a quick, fast, fast rate until we get to around 2 and then it's flattening off, but it's still increasing. You know, it's not decreasing. That makes intuitive sense. Why? Because on the PDF, as you're moving along here, you're, do you agree that you're adding more and more area? And this is basically what we call an area, right? And since the PDF does not fall below this zero line, you're always adding a positive area. So in other words, this CDF can't fall as X goes up. Next thing you can see from a property is we can see from the CDF graph here is that X gets bigger and bigger and bigger in the positive direction. The graph, the CDF here value tends to one. That's what this is saying. In the reverse direction, as the x gets smaller and smaller and smaller, even into negative x's range, the CDF approaches or even can equal zero. In fact, here you can see in our example it does go to zero. Why is this tend to? Because tend to means that it's just um, it means it can asymptote towards zero. Is that you know it might have some kind of function which goes towards zero but never equal to zero. So that um, covers that case. Uh, the final case here I put in brackets because this is only for people who do more like rigorous mathematical statistics courses. Um, this function x, this function f is right continuous, right? Because of the way we've defined this thing here. Uh, for everybody else's purposes, it's uh, oh we can forget that I think you're right. It's because it's continuous; it doesn't really matter. That that uh, right continuous thing explains why I've got the inequalities written this way around. Okay. Right. What else? Um, Oh yeah, definition time. So x is a continuous random variable if its CDF is continuous. What does that mean? Remember, a graph is continuous if a function is continuous if I can kind of in one variable if I can kind of draw it without taking my pen off the paper. Okay, so here it goes. In other words, there's no break. I can just draw this in one go. That's in contrast to um, discrete random variable. Uh, if you look at CDF for that, that's got breaks everywhere. I'm using the word everywhere there very loosely, right at all points. Okay, so let's um, look at these notes here. Well, there's area in the graph of, right, so I've gone through that. Uh, CDF to PDF, ah, this is a very important point. Yeah, I can go from the CDF to PDF by undoing what the integration, i.e. by differentiating. So if I differentiated CDF, I should get back to the PDF, guys, and that is the way to check your answer. I'm going to say earlier you can check your answer this way. So here is like, 1 minus x to the minus 4, right? Power to the minus 4. You can differentiate that in your head, right? Take the minus 4 down, it's going to be minus and minus as a plus, that's 4x, and then uh, to the power of minus 4, and then plus 1 on minus 4, it gives us minus 3. In other words, 
and differential of that constant with respect to random uh, to uh, is zero. So this is just four over x, four over x, four over x five. Did I kind of say three? Why did I say three? So x to the minus four. Bring the four down. Yeah, minus four minus the one. That's minus five. Good. Right. So at least you can see it's easy to make errors when I do. Right. So that gives me that. Cool. And that's for that ring. Done. Uh, so that's very important to check your answers. You might be thinking, well, what is the use of the CDF? Well, for continuous random variables, the CDF is pretty much the most useful thing. Uh, all the kind of probabilities and expectations, either statistical properties of the random variables computed through via the CDF. Or, so actually, it makes more sense to, to work from the CDF than the PDF in, in a theory point of view. You know, you first get the CDF, then you're going to get everything else off that. Although this question is the reverse. Um, so one use of a CDF supposing I have that is we can compute the probability that x is less than or equal to a value a for any value a without having to uh, integrate the PDF each time. In other words, go back here. Suppose I want the probability that x is less than or equal to say 2. Right, so x is bigger than 2. Is, x equals 2 is bigger than or equal to 1, so I'm looking under here. All I do is substitute 2 for x here, so it's 1 minus 1 over 2 to the power of 4 will be the answer. Okay, so I can do it for any value of x. However, note guys, because x is continuous, random variable, if you have a question like what's the probability that x is equal to a particular value, like what's the probability that x is equal to 1, you might think, oh, I just, what do I do here? Um, well, you don't have to do anything because for a random variable that is continuous, the probability that x is equal to any value is 0. We can also use the this PDF to compute the area between two points, like between A and B, and that is just going to be the CDF computer point, the higher value minus lower value. In other words, it's just the area from A to B. So if I pick, oh, that's graph and he's zooming it, if I pick A, right, let's say A is 1, uh, B is 2, then basically you're looking at the area to the left of 2, which is all this stuff up to here, because there's a 0 under there, and 1, which is basically that. So then you're just going to get this. Okay, so that brings the end of my presentation. If you want to kind of have a bit more practice at this kind of thing, you can just work this thing through. We're going to do part A here, showing that K is equal to 4.